Good morning, New Holland. Uh, I'm going to share a little bit of my life today, and uh, it's a lot of personal things I never really told a lot of people about, but uh, I don't know, if hopefully it'll help somebody, and maybe they've gone through the same experiences. If I could say a short prayer here just before I start. Dear Lord, just guide me today in my, in my voice, and just let your spirit be uplifted, and let it be a guidance towards others. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> I was born in Miami, Florida, of Spanish descent. I was raised as a Catholic. At the age of six, due to family violence, we were relocated by the kindness of a stepfather to the small town of Albany, Georgia. <clears throat> Times were tough, and I grew up spending a lot of time on the streets. I can recall occasionally going to church, and the church would help us with food, used toys on holidays, and it was a joy back then just to have a used toy. My brother and I, we were a product of our environment, and we used to fight like cats and dogs. <clears throat> By the age of 13, I was a delinquent, shoplifting, vandalizing on the streets. And it was at that age I was first caught breaking the law. I had assumed I would receive probation, but the judge had other plans for me. Uh, I'll never forget him pointing his finger at me, stating, I'm going to make an example out of you, son. Sentence, one month in YDC jail. Sentence to be carried out immediately. I was shocked. <laughs> I was needless to say. First few days in lockup, a man from Gideon's Bible came and gave us one of those little Bibles. I want to do a shout out for the Gideon Bibles because that man came here a while back and they do a really good work. It's amazing. I was incarcerated with one other man in a small concrete cell and we quickly got into a fight. Two kids locked in a room beating each other up. I'll never forget it. I was placed in solitary confinement for two weeks. It was there that I opened that little Bible <laughs> and began to read it. Excuse me. <sighs> that little book, it, be it began to read to me. <laughs> and it spoke in my life. <sighs> Second, please. <clears throat> On my knees, I repented and gave my life to Jesus. Now, after being in the Catholic faith, I couldn't understand why no one ever told me what was in this little wonderful book. Now, after two days of being out of solitary, I got in a fight again. I was told to go back to my cell. Facing solitary again and more possible jail time, I fell to my knees and asked God's forgiveness telling him I didn't think I could handle solitary again. I was released by the end of the week. That was my probably my first answer to prayer. Uh, excuse me. Now I was back on the streets. I knew of God, and I was looking for Him. I went to the Catholic churches looking for the Spirit of God, only to not find it. I asked a family to no avail. I quickly returned to my old ways. My stepfather was a bar back at a local lounge. I would go to him to work at times, stocking liquor boxes and beer coolers. It was there I began sneaking drinks. I had a lot of uncles who would visit us from Miami at the time, and needless to say, Budweiser was a staple in our home. Excuse me. Sometime around the age of 16, 
Jesus kept coming back into my mind. I couldn't understand it. <sighs> but I knew that there was more to life. Once again, I looked to heaven and asked God to help me understand what I was missing. You know, if you ask God something in true faith and it's His will, He will answer. But then a week, once again, a young boy came around. He was Spanish, and we quickly became friends. He began to preach of God, and I went to my first ever Pentecostal church. I'd never seen anything like it in my life. I was, I mean, it was, woo. Uh, all I knew was those folks loved the God. They loved the Lord. They danced and praised His name. I had to share it. I recall, this is a big deal, I recall telling my 100% Puerto Rican Catholic grandmother, I was now a spirit-filled Pentecostal, no longer to be labeled a Catholic. The look I got from my grandmother at that time would have scared any man because, I mean, she just didn't do that. Uh, I had began to attend prayer groups, learning by reading the Word. Now, none of my group was perfect. We all had our faults. Uh, the more we prayed and rebuked the enemy, the harder he came against us. After a few years, the devil got a foothold of us. My friend who introduced me to the faith had struggled with drugs, attempted suicide, and wound up rebuking his faith. Two other married couples decided to divorce and leave the faith. The pastor of the church was let go because of adultery. I felt the deck was stacked. Uh, excuse me. I personally uh, liked a little Christian girl, and the Lord decided it was not for me. It was just everything all at once, just too much. I then made, a, at that time, a conscious decision. I spoke with the Lord in prayer, and I said I couldn't take it anymore. I was returning back to who I was. It was easier to live a life of sin than to carry my cross for Him. I was young. I knew it was wrong, but I wasn't going to live my life as a hypocrite. Either I served the Lord daily, being repentant of my sins, or serving the God of this world. I made the choice. I dove headfirst. I picked up a pack of cigarettes, began smoking weed again, and drinking heavy. At that time, I knew, and it kept ringing in my ears, 2 Peter 2.21, For it would have been better for them not to have known the ways of righteousness than after they had known it to turn away from the holy commandment delivered unto them. <sighs> but I knew the gospel and I wouldn't speak it. The more I sinned, the more I began to drink, attempting to kill or silence my spirit. I spent the next 14 or so years working and partying, in and out of jail, drinking, drunken disorderlies. I can recall one night sitting around a fire, holding a 44, listening to the enemy, talking to my head. And I just thank the Lord that I didn't do that. Uh, excuse me. Uh, I met my wife afterwards. We both drank, decided not to have kids, and moved to Florida to begin a new life. Our dining room consisted of a pool table and a gambling machine. We hosted many parties. I had been a custom cabinet maker there for many years. I decided to change my career, get into the granite business, an easier job. 
My foreman and I quickly became friends, being as how we both enjoyed the crazy lifestyle. I believe I began creating a God in my own image in my mind. I wore a large cross around my neck like some badge of honor. Kept the Bible on the dash, on the dash of my car only to dust it off occasionally. The longer I walked away from God, the more comfortable I became in my sin. One day I began to feel weak. I had a hard time walking any form of incline. I was diagnosed with AFib. I had drank and smoked my heart out of rhythm. Even the threat of death didn't stop me from drinking. My addictions had a strong hold on me. At this time, searching purpose in my life, I joined a Latin motorcycle gang. A gang of wannabe 1% percent percenters. That was a major mistake. My language quickly changed, and that Harley Davidson made me feel like I was bulletproof. I left the gang. About this time, I believe God sent another man into my life who spoke of God. I was sick and tired of killing myself, searching in the bottle, the essence of the spirit which only God can fulfill. There's a reason they call alcohol spirits. <sighs> Excuse me. Once again, this time, deciding no matter what. <laughs> I was going to live for Jesus. <sighs> I took that large cross from my neck, so no longer wear one. I'm going to begin to carry one. <sighs> Now, my addiction to cigarettes was pretty tough. That was a hard one to beat. But I had read enough scriptures to know that if it was for His will, and you ask all in fasting and prayer, He'll do it for you. So I did my first ever 24-hour fast with a long motorcycle ride alone. The next day, I never, ever smoked another cigarette again. I praise God for that, because that was, that was. I went to work and began to proclaim Jesus boldly. Everyone figured I'd lost my mind. Biker crazy one day and Christ Christian the next. I turned my swimming pool room that I used to heavily drink in into a prayer war room hanging scripture on the walls daily listening to audio bible and preachings and i went through my neighborhood asking for forgiveness of my wrongs uh, i knew that what we fed into our eyes quickly comes out of our hearts and mouth one of my neighbors was 90 years old. He had lost his wife, living alone. Due to a UTI, his family put him in a memory ward. The Lord put Rocky on my heart. I spent the next few years by his side. He was baptized at the age of 92. That was a sight. 92 years old, man. He was... He, he passed away at 93 never denying Jesus to the end. I love that man. The Lord was so gracious to me. Within the first few years, I was a witness to my wife recommitting to Jesus as well as my mother. One spark from God can create a fire. Now my work had had enough of me. I couldn't handle the new Jose. The secretary would tease me on how I knew God. My foreman friend would test me of my faith. And he would anger at my Christian witness. 
Nothing could take my smile away from Jesus. Nothing. I, I know of whom I have believed. I never bragged at work of the work I was doing for the Lord. I kept my mouth shut and endured the results, the insults. I was relieved of my duties for my job. Three years later, I was invited to one of the, of the workers at that shop's wedding. I was astounded to hear that he had turned to Jesus. Prior, he was very anti-God. He pulled me aside to say, when he first seen me come to God, every day he would see me so happy, glowing. After I was fired, he decided he wanted to have some of that joy, and he gave his life to Christ. Amen. I wept for God to use me in such a way as for somebody just to see me in his joy. That, that was amazing to me. As Christians, the world is watching us. It's important that we protect our witness in Christ. I began a new job as a cabinet foreman. And within my first week, I suffered a stroke at home. I lost my speech that night. My right arm wouldn't move and half my face was frozen. We're not promised tomorrow. In my mind, I was talking to God, asking why, Lord, why now? I was a faithful witness to him, doing all I could. I recall the hospital taking me upstairs for an MRI. As I looked at that machine, I seen it as my coffin. In the machine, I spoke in prayer to the Lord. Please, O oh Lord, please, if it's your will, allow me to witness your name one more time. As they took me out of the machine, they put me in the gurney, I looked over to that male nurse, and my mouth opened like a slow tape recorder. I asked him if he knew Jesus. Surprised, the nurse asked me, he said, are you asking me if I knew Jesus? At this time, I yelled, yes! And my frozen arm went straight up to praise God. I haven't shut up since. <laughs> I realize there will always be skeptics, but I fear the Lord too much and too much respect for Him to make up something like that. Upon my second MRI, it revealed I have two dime-sized dead spots on the left side, left side of my brain. Today, I only have constant AFib, Occasional nerve twitching in my eyes, so I'm not winking at you guys sometimes and just let you know. And my right hand thumb just numbs up. I just consider it the thorn in my flesh, like Paul had, and a badge of honor, to, a reminder of what God has done for me. <sighs> my wife and I have felt a calling to move here to this area. So we sold all we had to relocate. It had to be God's plan because from day one of packing to getting here, at every turn, we've had issues. We've purchased a home that was in dire need of major repairs. I was tested in everything I had preached about to others over all the years. Sadly, I failed many tests. I know that I'm a work in Christ to be repaired daily, just like this house. I just thank God He doesn't rip it all out at once, like this house. So don't judge me by my past. I don't live there anymore. We've been attending New Holland for a little while now. I feel we've made many Christ-loving friends here and hope to spend more time here. In closing, I'd like to offer everyone 
who was interested, two witness coins. Keep one for yourself, or better yet, ask God to bring someone before you to present it to. They're little pennies with crosses stamped in them. You never know what the other person is going through. I usually just tell them, whatever they're going through, Jesus knows it. It makes sense to follow Jesus. Jesus. 